Um, so, and I'm going to talk to us about our stories. And really, we are part of a magnificent story of God that's going on through history right now in this moment. Do you know that? You're part of eternity. The Bible says that God has set eternity into the hearts of people and so we are part of something eternal someone eternal and um, we haven't finished with our journeys with God have we some of us might not have even started and if you're in that place I'd love to do you a bit of an introduction to Jesus at some point today that would be amazing but um, this is the, the verse that um, I felt to start with by sort of telling us about really and um, it's recorded in a book called Peter in the Bible which was a letter and um, we're told, this is kind of advice that was written back for history, but it's good advice for us as well. So he said to us, be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason that the, of the hope that you have. Let me start that again, because I messed that up a bit. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. And do this with gentleness and respect. That's important, isn't it? So it's not just we've got a really great message to carry. How we carry it is really important. And I heard someone say once that sometimes our lives are the only Bible someone's going to read. And that doesn't mean that we don't encourage people to, to read God's word. It just means people are watching us. They're watching our lives. And we're a story of God ourselves, really, and his work in us. And hope really is about the joyful expectation of good things to come. And we believe in the most high God, right? <laughs> so we should be the most secure people and most peace filled people people and most eternally focused people on the planet full of hope and full of truth even if our current scenario doesn't feel like that and so I want to encourage us today to really look at our journeys and look at the lives that we've seen God interact in that we know about not just in history but our own our own friends and our own stories I love the um, picture that Jeremiah the prophet paints us um, and he, he talks about this pot and he says, you know, there was a pot and it just got, you know, all a bit messed up <laughs> in the hands of the potter. And then God kind of speaks to him as he's, he's looking at this potter, shaping this pot and, and making, making a new pot from the same clay. And he says, can I not do with you as the potter does? <laughs> So can I not take this pot that's gone a bit lumpy and bumpy and needs a bit of reforming? Can I not do exactly that? Set my hands upon your life and make something even better than before. And God is in the business of good things in life, isn't he? Like it says in the Bible that we'll see the goodness of God, not just in heaven, but in the land of the living. So I, I want to encourage us that good things are are up for us you know God is good and he's he's with us so I want to ask us a question really because God is so many things to so many people even in the Bible he's referred to in lots of different ways we hear that he's called provider there's like Greek and Hebrew words that are used but I won't use them today but we hear that he's called a creator he's a provider we hear that he's he's peace itself we hear that he's a savior and all these kind of aspects of God we might know a tiny bit of but I reckon all of us probably haven't experienced all of it yet because we might never you know some of us might know God as the healer because we've actually had him tangibly heal something emotionally or physically or mentally in our lives but there will be a particular area of our lives that you know we have really recognized God is true to be um, in us. So um, I just thought it'd be quite interesting to do a little hands up and on Zoom, you can put your hand, you know, your little emoji thing up um, and see who's kind of experienced God, who's experienced God in the area of finance and provision, pop your hand up. Gwyneth had one earlier which was really encouraging she found 35 quid in her phone <laughs> when she didn't have any money and she just suddenly felt to look in her phone and there was 35 pounds and she was like what I would never put 35 pounds in my phone <laughs> um who's experienced God to be healer like in, in your mind or in your emotions brilliant how about um giving you creative solutions for something cool um how about just a sense of his presence like you just suddenly become aware of the presence of God 
And what about his peace? A bit like what Pete was saying earlier. That was really great, wasn't it? So, you know, we haven't all put our hands up for all of it, but all of us have got it together, do you see? And it's really brilliant how we carry in our lives the story of God, the truth about who God is for us. And I want to encourage us to kind of hold on to those things that we know that God has done in us and that we've seen in the lives of others. There's a verse in Revelation that's written by a chap called John, and he says this, that we overcome in life. We become overcomers, not you know, pushed underneath by things, by the blood of the lamb, by what Jesus has done on, on the cross, what he's paid for, and by the word of the testimony. So it sounds a bit strange, but just Jesus doing that was not enough for us to overcome. What helps us overcome is hearing the stories and testimonies, a specific word used for Christians, us Christians, brothers and sisters who believe in Jesus and the power that he has. Um, to affect eternity and change our lives so we need both to be overcomers I wonder if that would help anyone today where you're feeling a bit overwhelmed you can become an overcomer not just by what Jesus has done but but the stories that people carry and then there's another verse in Revelation that says that the testimony of Jesus is telling stories about what Jesus is doing and has done is a is the spirit of prophecy which means what we've heard God do before it's kind of a, a clue and and a promise that he can do it again in the future, which is really good news, isn't it? <laughs> so sometimes we read these things in the Bible or we hear the stories in people's lives. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I think, oh, that means I've missed it because they got it. It's ridiculous, isn't it? But actually it's permission that we see God working in one person's life and we think, right, I'm going to pray that God does it for me or does it for them as well. And that's what I want us to kind of reach a hold of today. So here's a little activity that we're going to do. And Zoom, join in, or if you're watching it back at home, do this as, do this as well. So um, I think it's helpful for us to just really recognize the key aspect of God that we feel we know of him and identify it. So here's an example from the psalmist. He said, lift up your heads, you gates, be lifted up you ancient doors that the king of glory may come in who's this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle so this psalmist he he was like oh i, I don't know i need god to kind of come in and appear in a certain way and then there's this question comes and there's like who is god who's god to you and he's like he's strong he's mighty he's the king of glory that's the response and we need to know what we're going to say don't we when someone says well who is god so who is god to you is your unique answer <laughs> I can't tell you. You can't just copy mine. <laughs> uh, I might want to copy yours because yours might be really good. But <laughs> um, just to have a think and maybe people will give some examples and just kind of say, you know, God is this to me. He's my provider or he's, the, you know, just like one word that would describe who God is. So shout some out for me. Saviour. God's a saviour and saving God is with us right now. He's with us. Anyone else want to do one? Freedom. God is freedom. So God's freeing Holy Spirit and power is with us right now. Love. love. God is love. Absolute love. And he's with us now. Deep peace. God is deep peace. He is the prince of peace. Isn't that amazing? So do you see, we each have God <laughs> set in us that we carry, and that's our unique, part of our unique story that we get to pass on to other people. And um, when we're thinking about what we carry in our lives from God, there's a flow and there's a message, and it's a journey. It's not just a final destination. And um, so we think about God and we think about our lives, I think sometimes, like a bit of a river. I'm living at the moment in ross on Y, and there's a beautiful river that just runs along. Um, and it's, it's huge, but it doesn't go in a straight line. It's got all these bends and twists and turns. And, you know, life would be great if it went in a straight line we'd get everywhere much quicker but life is like that river you know in and out turning and twisting but carving its path to the right destination and we can look at our lives a bit like a river and, and kind of follow the thread 
and the theme of our lives and see what the flow of God's spirit is doing in our lives. So again, I want to ask us a question. And um, if we could have the next slide, thanks. Um, where can we see the theme of God running through our lives? So we've kind of identified who God is to us, but where can we see that theme? Um, that maybe synergy is a better word or a thread or the whole redemption story of, of Jesus. Where do we see that? And if our life had a moral to the story or, or there was a life message that we carried, I wonder what yours would be so far because you're not finished yet. But we were talking in the car on the way down about, you know, famous people. And we were saying, you know, who's who carries a real message? You know, it, it's like God's heart and God's message for this world. And we were saying, um, Arabelle came up with, you know, Martin Luther King, you know, she said that, you know, we want to see people based on their character and not on their skin. And that that's the heart of God, isn't it? <laughs> that's really the heart of God. And um, see everybody as equal and loved uniquely by God. And so, you know, we came up with that one as a sort of a little motto, I suppose. But we have a sort of motto that we carry as well, that's God's message that come, runs out of our lives and so I just thought let's have a think about what ours might be and the way that we can get there with it is just to have a think about you know are there um, you know specific areas where we see just a very strong theme of God working I'll, I'll tell you a bit about mine I feel like I can really see a theme of God's provision just coming at the right time I've seen some really strange things happen to my in my life even just meeting my Mike and him having four children is just ridiculous amazing blessing because I'd just kind of given up on having my own children I wasn't really sure if I wanted to put my body through it either so it's like a great result and uh, <laughs> couldn't really get a better result could you four for free uh, <laughs> and um and you know and sort of thinking oh, I've journeyed through lots of relationships and I've always questioned, oh, what about them? What about them? Exhausting myself with it. And actually, my story of God is that he provides at the right time when I'm not clamoring and flapping about things and not just relationally what I need. And I'm not just talking husbands, you know, friendship, I've seen that. God just brings the right person at the right time. God just brings provision at the right time. My car died on the motorway a couple of years ago and just randomly I prayed about it and people started to text me from all around the country saying this is really strange but I feel like I want to send you some money for something and I am not joking I paid for my entire car on a visa debit card because people around the country were praying for me and sent me money <laughs> it was incredible absolutely incredible and I just thought I really have an integrity about carrying the provision of God <laughs> for people and I need to remember that for my next bend in, in life because at the moment we're waiting on a house and I'm getting a bit like Ooh! and it might not be the right house you know I don't know I've got to hold on to the, the thread and the weave that God has been doing in my life that he knows exactly what I need and and it says in the bible he's a provider so you know he he will do this and I'm not I'm not kind of worried about it now. I sort of talked my head around, I suppose, because of the story that I carry of God in me. And so I wonder if you could identify what your, the moral of your story is. I guess mine is God will provide the right thing at the right time, <laughs> whatever it is. I guess that's what I carry now. That's, that's a hope-filled message that I carry as my story. And um, Claire actually referred to this earlier, but um, there's also verses that we have a sort of like, they kind of like are a bit like, I don't know, like trees on the corner of the bend of the river that we kind of pass by and we know they're there and they're firm in the ground. So I'll just share a couple of my um, verses that have been helpful to me. And then perhaps you can have a think about what ones you've got in your life that kind of come alongside your story. So one of them is, is the verse about... Aaron having the 12 name, the names of the 12 tribes of Israel written on his heart, because I, I've actually got that on a slide. <laughs> and, um, and they were on gemstones and he really had them there kind of engraved on him, weighty on him. And I've just always had this sense of, you know, people are treasures to God and churches. I work with lots of different churches. They're treasures to God. 
And so, you know, God engraves these things on Aaron and he says, you know, every time we're to go into the holy place, I won't forget my people. I never forget my people. And I think that's been something that I, you know, when I go around a bend <laughs> in life, I must, I, I think, you know, I'm treasure to God as well. Someone right now might be praying for me and I'm on their heart. And I'm not forgotten because God says he'll never forget his people. Another verse that was really significant to me was in Genesis. I was just reading my Bible one day and it was like it went. <laughs> it was like I suddenly was reading it in really loud voice in my head. I was like, oh, and um, it was when I was living in Cheltenham and I was kind of thinking, oh, should I go to Bristol, move to Bristol? I've been friends with Greg and Claire for years. and We wanted to live together. And, <laughs> and now. Oh, I've left <laughs> um, but um, it was just really interesting and I, one of the verses was go to the city I'm sending you to which was Jeremiah and then the other verse was leave your native country your relatives and go to the land that I will show you and my parents um, and my family were just we've always been in Cheltenham apart from my brother who moved to France and I just really felt you know um, I don't want to leave them. Can I leave them? They're getting old. <laughs> you know, they're not that old really, but I was, I was just really tightly tied to them. And it was quite a big thing for me to just go, no, I will go to Bristol. And this verse, it was like sort of confirming and pushing me and surging me forward. Does that make sense? And so I think we all have things where we know God has said, you know, this one will nudge you on around the next bend. And so look for those as well, because they're part of your unique story of God. No one else is going to maybe apply the verses the same as you into your life, because it's a living word, the Bible. So it takes shape and forms around our journeys. And then this is a really good one, again, about provision, because um, this is an area that I feel vulnerable in. And it's strange that it's the area that I've seen the most results in. <laughs> is that weird? Why is that? I don't know. Someone can tell me afterwards. But um, so one of them is that I was just worrying about, you know, when my parents die, I won't have any money, which sounds ridiculous. Or how will I live? Or I live by faith and, you know, don't always get paid loads of money when I'm going to do consultancy and things like that. And actually, this verse struck me. After Abraham's death, God blessed his son Isaac. And it was like God was saying, beyond the family, I will look after you. <laughs> and it was a really, it was just really significant. So I'm sharing these because actually I wonder whether people might need to hear them themselves. <laughs> so you, you can have mine <laughs> and we're all in it together, aren't we? And then Exodus 3, it's just a promise from God that he is always going to be with us. And that's one that's kind of traveled with me throughout my whole life I can't really remember a day where I haven't known Jesus or had a chat with God so I don't have a massive dramatic story of um, before and after but I've I felt God pin me around um, the corners of my life and the bends of life and I feel like he's really held me and there's a flow that I can track of his story in me and and you will have your own Here's a verse again from Colossians. Um, actually, I won't read the same. Oh, no, I will read the whole thing. This is Paul writing. He's like, I've become servant by the commission, the commission that God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that's been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them, God's chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So Jesus in you brings hope of God's glory to other people. Do you feel like that today? It's true. It's true. And he's the one we proclaim and we teach and we bring wisdom and we complete and we present ourselves that we're perfect and complete in Christ. And then Paul says, to this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. He's really serious about this, isn't he? <laughs> but he's got it. He's got this hope and he wants to pass it on. He's serious about it. And, um, I heard someone who writes for Tear Fund, a chap called Gideon, he said this, the world does not need any more fear. What it does need is hope and you can be its carrier. You carry the hope of God in you, the risen Jesus. 
And there's a little phrase I use. Every time I read a story in scripture of God's working in someone's life, I always apply this and I do it the same when I hear a testimony. So you can take these three little phrases. If God did it then, he can do it again. If he did it for them, he can do it for you. And if he did it there, he can do it here. So everything you hear is someone else's story of God and that you carry, it's permission. Again, like I said, the the spirit of God is is like a, a prophecy, isn't it? And we are chosen people. We are royal priests. We are a holy nation. We are God's own treasured possession. And as a result, we can show others the goodness of God because he's called you, he's called me, he's called us out of darkness and into his wonderful light that's what he's done that's what he's done and so we're communicators of good news so we can think to ourselves what is God doing now in this moment a bit like Claire was saying right I think the best way we can do good news right now is to pray Remember that people are treasures, even politicians, if we're naffed off with them, they're still treasures to God that we need to bring into his presence and go, God, what are you saying? What do you want to do? We pray for breakthrough in this. And so we're thinking all the time, God, what are you doing? How can I join in? How can I pass it on? How can I help others join in? That's what we carry. That's what we carry. And then we can have these prophetic senses, these um, revelations from God about what is real and true in that moment. And we can pass them on. You know, we can say, I've got a sense of this. Can I pray for you for this? And we thank God for them when we start to pray for people. You know, thank you, God, for this person. They're a treasure to you in this time. You know, we don't just depersonalize everybody into sort of numbers or targets or a big blob of people Jesus sees the one doesn't he He looks into the eyes of us today and holds our face and says you know I've put good hope in you you're a carrier of hope you're a carrier of peace you have eternity set within you here's another one that um, actually my husband likes to do he asks people you know if God could do one thing or a miracle in your life what would it be what would it be? Because we carry one of those miracles already, because we have been saved by Jesus in all sorts of ways, not just eternally. And um, I want us to kind of get ready um, what I'd like to call a two-word testimony. And this is kind of a summary of our lives, but it's not really two words, actually. It should be really called four words, because it's going to be four, but it's two, two words in two blocks. So is that all right? And um, if you've seen The Chosen, um, you might have picked up on this phrase. I love The Chosen, by the way. Woo woo, The Chosen. Everyone watch it. <laughs> um, but there's a, an encounter that Mary has with Nicodemus. And she, she says this quote. She says, I can't really explain to you what's happened to me. But all I can say is I was one way and now I'm completely different. And the thing that happened in between was him (laughs) isn't that a cool quote (laughs) I was like this now I'm totally different but in the middle was Jesus (laughs) and so somehow he did this (laughs) and she's totally overwhelmed and I love seeing the behind the scenes of the bible that happens in that program but um that's what I want us to do I want us to think I was like this now I'm like this and in between was Jesus (laughs) And that's our phrase, okay? That's going to be our new catchphrase, everyone, for this week to take us through. Because that's our testimony. That is the story of God that we carry. So it doesn't have to be the moment you first met Jesus. I can't do that because I can't remember one. Because I've been a Christian since I was about five. But there are times in my life where I know I've gone from being like this to being like that. And the only thing that I can credit with that is Jesus the change. He is the reason that I, that there's been a change. So this is my one. Welcome to my confession session. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> so I was quite, and I used to get really angry about things and quite worked up about stuff. And um, I lived in this world of sort of like, I'd imagine things so vividly um, 
my mum used to say, you've gone off into fantasy land again. She literally used to use that phrase. And even as an adult, I can feel sometimes things sort of bubbling up in me and this kind of want to just sort of imagine a better world, <laughs> imagine my better life. And then I can spend ages just in a dolly daydream thinking about it. Anyway, I thought, oh, it'd be quite good to involve Jesus in this at some point, wouldn't it? A bit dysfunctional. So then... I ended up with this amazing, as I've shared with you earlier, that I got provision beyond my own family. A lot of this sort of anger and fantasy was that I feared I didn't have enough in my little family unit. I had a sort of sense of lack, really. And actually, that's not right, is it? Because God says, you know, you're my sheep and, you, and I'm going to provide for you. You know, I don't leave you with nothing. And so I, I went from angry fantasy <laughs> to having provision and then a vision for life, a really, really clear, it came from that gemstone picture, really, a really clear vision for life that I feel like I'm not really very movable from now. I'm constantly thinking I'm meant to go and help people um, feel equipped, um, you know, and walk well with God. So my two words are, I was angry and lived in fantasy. Now I have provision beyond my family and vision for life. And in between, was Jesus. Isn't that cool? So can we have a go <laughs> in the room and on Zoom, type on up um, your two words, befores and afters. And don't forget, I know it sounds a really weird thing, don't forget to say in between was Jesus. You've got your script there. So who would like to just have a little go? Great. Yeah, as an addict, and now I'm an evangelist telling everyone about God, and in between was Jesus. Brilliant. Next. <laughs> I'll repeat them down the mic. <laughs> okay, have a little think. You were hot off the press. <laughs> oh, great. I was hard hearted and now I'm forgiven and in between was Jesus. <laughs> Brilliant. I didn't know how to love people and now I love people. Amazing. So I didn't know how to love people and then I saw God's love. And in between was Jesus, so I could love. Is that right? I sort of summarised that. <laughs> I was an outsider. Now I'm never alone. Oh, I was an outsider. Now I'm never alone. In between was Jesus. See, your stories are precious, aren't they? Anyone else? I think there are a couple of ones that have gone on the chat. I don't know if you can get them or shall I click on them? Hattie put one up. I just saw. I was a non-believer. Now I have peace in between with Jesus. I was a non-believer. Now I have peace in between with Jesus. Tasha, thanks. Kasha said, I was self-hating and now I know my worth. And in between was Jesus. Amazing. See what God does in our lives. And he hasn't finished yet. <laughs> he hasn't finished yet. We're halfway through, really. Some of us not even. I was lost but now I'm found. Yeah. What an amazing thing to feel found. Like we sort of say it's quite a Christian-y phrase, isn't it? But we're actually found by God. Cool. Cool. 
Naive and self-centered. Now I'm secure and happy. Naive and self-centered. Now I'm secure and happy. And in between was Jesus because of Jesus. It's cool, eh? <laughs> so maybe just if you haven't had one come to you now, go away and get yours ready. <laughs> Because that's your unique story. <laughs> Find the Bible verses that fit around it and kind of help you weave through. And then you'll, you'll probably find that you need to look back at them as well so that you know what you carry and your unique story. I'm just going to um, finish with this, this verse from Paul writing to the Colossians. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other. With all the wisdom he gives, sing hymns and psalms and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. <laughs> Write a song about it. <laughs> Pass it on. Your life is like a song and a story and you carry his hope. And so I'm just going to pray for us now that we'll, we'll kind of feel reconnected to our unique story, our unique testimony the things that we carry personally that are true about God in this world. And, you know, just be aware that people might start asking you, the more you, you're aware of it, they might start asking you, what's the reason for the hope you carry? And get yourself ready. Because <laughs> these, these are our truths that we carry about God. So, yeah, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're in this room with us. Wherever we're sitting right now, joining in. God, thank you that you're joining in with us. And Lord, I thank you that you're a saving God. You're a peace bringing God. You're a hope bringer. You're love himself. And all of these aspects about you, Lord, I pray will become more and more true in our lives. That we'll start to know our story and have real clarity about the way that you're working through us, Lord. God, I thank you that none of us um, are just one blob attached to another, but we're uniquely, wonderfully, individually made by you, have a journey with you. A, our own unique story and testimony. And Lord, help us to remember the hope we have, the hope we've had from the past, but the hope we have for the future, Lord. And not just take it um, and hide it under a bowl, but to be willing to share it out like a light on a stand that could light a whole house up. God, I thank you that you filled us with your light. And I just have a sense that maybe in this, in this room and perhaps wherever we're joining in, that God just wants to kind of, it's like the switch has been on a dimmer and he wants to just turn up the light in our lives. And often with light comes heat. And I sort of feel physically cold in this moment, but I'm just aware that there's a sense of the warming presence of God, a bit like an incubator, the light and the warmth. And so, Holy Spirit, we invite your light to shine brightly through us. Illuminate our lives, God. And something I do that's not magical symbol, but I, I open my hands to say, God, I, I, I want to receive that. I want to receive your light in my life. This world feels dark and confused, but you are the light of the world, God. And so maybe wherever we are, let's just open our hands out and do a prayer inside us. I receive the light of God's spirit into me again the hope of him and his light shines in the darkness and you know what darkness cannot put it out so light of God would you just come now by the power of your spirit warm our souls ignite our faith again Lord that you you have been working in us and you will continue to work thank you Lord Thank you, Lord.